welcome everyone in person as well as all of you who are watching online. Thank you for joining us. We believe the next several days are divine appointments and where God has impartations for all of our life that he will make deposits, rich deposits of his grace in our life that we will experience for many days to come. And so this time that has been sanctified or set apart for the Lord is holy. That means it's his will that we want. It's his desire. And we, we put away all preconceived ideas and we just come and we're just ready to receive. We're ready to participate. We're ready to join in, to lend our supply of the spirit, to say amen, to jump right in the middle of it. Amen, because that's why we're here. He has brought us together. We're his people and he's our God and he's got great things in store for those that love him. Great, great and mighty things. Your eye hasn't seen it, your ear hasn't heard it, it hasn't even begun to be understood, but God has great things for those that love Him. Amen. He's not sleeping on the throne. He never sleeps on the job, never sleeps, never sleeps. You know, I mean, there might be some sleepy heads right now at home, but I want you to know, wake up, sleepy head. You're doing all right being with us. All right, we have some very special guests that I want to introduce. And so, first of all, on the platform already is Reverend... Jimmy Bratcher, he and his wonderful wife, Sherry Hale, from the great, great city of Kansas City, Missouri. He's born in Liberty, Missouri. They have a tremendous testimony. They have a wonderful resource table that tells the story of Christ and how, what Christ has done in their life. And it is a powerful testimony, just like your testimony is powerful. And so we just rejoice that there are friends in the faith. And we love you dearly. We love you dearly, and it's a great honor for you uh, to come up here and uh, fight that great headwind, that great north wind today, to come up here and be with us. It was a little heady and high-minded today. All right, so next, uh, the popcorn section we have. Who's that? I don't know. We'll just keep moving on. All right, we have Reverend Philip Slaughter. You are. I left my sarcasm in Kansas City. That's... I'm not under the annoying tonight. All right. We appreciate that. <laughs> we have Reverend Philip Slaughter. He comes from Virginia. And he's got a testimony he's going to share tonight. He's going to weave a message and his music together. And so uh, get ready to be refreshed. Uh, we have, of course, the Bishop of Detroit, uh, Tyron Meredith, and uh, his wonderful son has joined us. Ty Jr. is back in the sound booth. And then uh, we are really honored. We've been trying to get Pastor Steve Abraham to come for many years. His schedule is quite full. He's from Oxnard, California. He and his wife, Tammy, have been there uh, now 23 years, going on 23 years. His son just got married last weekend, so he came here to rest. And he came here to get restored. <laughs> Amen. And... Um, He'll be ministering tomorrow night. Philip will be ministering this evening. And let me just throw this out there, especially for those that are watching online as well as everyone who's here in person. Tomorrow night we have a very special session from 9 to 10 o'clock. It's a Facebook Live session only. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Thank you, Drew. And uh, so sort of set your alarm. You can tell I need to set mine and uh, get my daylight savings time all squared away. But from 9 to 10, they're going to be uh, just talking about the thing that the Lord has revealed to them and what is the primary or the most beneficial message they believe they need to be communicating to the body of Christ at this season in the earth. And so I'm going to introduce them tomorrow morning, get out of the way, and then they're just going to just elaborate for an hour. And it's really going to be rich. So that's a live stream only so you can join us at 9 a.m. on Facebook tomorrow morning. PJ's Coffee, Bedhead, the whole nine yards, you just join us. We won't see you, but you can see us. And so uh, we'll try to look somewhat respectable. See. Yes, thank you. I just needed confirmation. So let me give you a verse out of uh, the book of Acts, the book of Acts before uh, we, re we uh, welcome Jimmy to come. The book of Acts in uh, chapter 10, in verse 33, and it says, this is Charlene and I's uh, heart towards all of our friends and guests of the faith that are with us. And you have done well to come. You have done well to come. Thank you. We're humbled. 
Now, therefore, we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by the Lord. And so that's why we're here, isn't it? And we love each other, but we first love him. And may that love be something that each and every one of us experiences. Uh, I want to welcome at this time to the platform Reverend Jimmy Bratcher. And uh, for those online as well as those in-house, we are not passing the baskets for offering at this season, but there are a couple offering receptacles out in the lobby. And you know that conferences like this, all of us can do our part, and then we can just help underwrite the expense of this conference. So you pray what your part is. You do your part, I do my part, we put all the parts together, it makes one big part, all right? And it'll all work out. As well as those of you online, there are several ways that you can give. You can give in person for those that are present tonight. You can give online, you can also mail in a gift. Go to our website, lwfknoxville.com. It's safe, it's secure. Go to the giving tab. Thanks for supporting this conference and the work of Jesus Christ. Let's welcome Reverend Jimmy. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. It's good to see you all, especially you up there in the cheap seats. I think you're a little suspicious up there in the dark, so I got my eye on you all. But it's great to be here tonight and to always come to to be back in Knoxville hanging out with y'all, all all y'all. But uh, I've been doing a Bible study um, on Wednesday nights, and I just started teaching out of the book of Genesis. And I read the first three words, and I just was captured by it. You know the first three words of the first chapter of the first book of the Bible? In the beginning. I just stopped right there. That reveals so much about God's character to us because God is the beginning and he is the author of new beginnings as well so that we have the opportunity to not only have a beginning but we get to begin again and that's what Jesus came for was to give us that access to the Father so that we could have a new beginning. That's what this song talks about. What if I could start over? What if the slate was clean? What if I didn't feel all this guilt and shame that I feel inside? It's because I'm so selfish. It's all about my foolish pride. But nothing matters without you in my life. All I hope for is a brand new day The day that I'm forgiven And I start over again It's a new day I hope cause hope's a good thing One of the best I'm told Hope's all I have when I don't have your hand to hold When will the sun shine again? When will these clouds be gone? But still I hope, I hope that today's the day Just 
just like the setting sun But then with every sunrise I face the lonely truth But still I hope, I hope that today's the day things that I that I just so hope that we can convey to y'all this weekend and that you can grab a hold of is this is that the Bible reveals to us that the chaos that surrounds our life isn't from God and it reveals to us that our peace isn't our circumstances it's not circumstantial but our peace is a person and he is you know it's the God of peace the Prince of peace the gospel of peace God is our peace and I know in these times that we're living in so many people are worried and fearful but as for us we have peace that goes above and beyond that chaos and so I hope tonight that you just receive this song in your heart and you take it home with you with this confession you are my peace
wash over me like a warm summer stream. You are my peace. For my anxious mind in these troubled times, you are my peace, Jesus. I will not. terror by day You are my peace And though the battle rage help me to stand I'm safe in your hand You are my peace Oh Jesus You are my Thank you so much. Please welcome Philip as he comes. Iowa, amen, where snow is on the way. <laughs> Praise God, amen. It is good to see everyone and uh, glad for those of you who are joining us online tonight, Facebook Live. I don't know what other type of media you have where people can join us, but we are certainly glad that you're joining us tonight. Amen. Wouldn't you just bless by Brother Jimmy? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I, I was about to just do a little doze there, you know, just <laughs> go to sleep to that peaceful music. Glory to God. You are my. <laughs> Is that going on to sleep or what? No. Nah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I, am, I, am, I am connecting to Wi-Fi here for, for just a moment. So give me, give me just a second. I might have to have one of these guys come up and do this because now my phone is not cooperating with me. Praise the Lord. I do know how to do it. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So did you connect? Praise the Lord. It's connecting. Amen. You know, I'm getting ready to fire this band. It's connected. Amen. Uh, you all know I can tease sometime. I'm a little bit nervous, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I thank God for my dark skin. You all can't see me blushing. So, <laughs> amen. It's good to be in church on a Friday night and good to be with the people of God on this evening. Amen. And we're just going to have a wonderful time in the Lord this evening. God has a plan, and, and we just believe we'll hook up with his plan and do all that he desires for us to do this evening. I am, as Pastor said, I'm going to do some singing this evening, but also I just want to share some of my testimony of some things that I've been through uh, this year. Amen. And uh, I hope you all are, are blessed this evening. I know you will be. Amen. Amen. Uh, Cause I I can just sense that pull, 
in the room, so I know you have an expectation of what God has for you this evening. Amen. And we're going to get everything that God has for us this evening. Amen. As I was uh, sitting back in the office, even just there in the office, I just had that, that knowing that there is expectation in the room tonight and just that knowing that, that the Father wants to do some things in your life tonight. Amen. Amen. There are answers and things that you've been praying about and things that you've been believing God for. Amen. And, and I believe this is a weekend of, of answers, of revelation, of impartation into your life. Amen. And, uh, and again, we want to get everything that God has for us this weekend. Praise God. Now, you all know, maybe those of you who are online and those of you who are new, uh, that I was raised Pentecostal. Amen. And, and so I didn't throw out my Pentecostal. <laughs> so if I get loud and get kind of rowdy and uh, run around the stage, I won't run around the room tonight, but I may run around the stage. I'm all right. <laughs> amen. Any, any, anything that's on fire, amen. When you get on fire, there's going to be something. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Drew. Amen. <laughs> hey! So. Amen. As Pastor was saying, Amen. You you got the variety pack this weekend. So, Amen. If you if you don't like one thing in the bag, just put it back and pull out something else. Amen. <laughs> amen. Show your gums tonight. It's all right. Amen. I'm gonna do this first song, and it's called "Lord, You're Mighty." Amen. And just join in, in join in with me tonight as we we honor the Lord. Amen. He is a mighty God, awesome God. Amen. And he is great in our midst tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Ooh, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you are mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. You are healer. Lord, you're mighty. Deliverer. Lord, you're mighty. You're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. And you're mighty in this place tonight. You're mighty. In our midst, Lord, you're mighty, you're mighty Lord, Lord you're mighty. to heal and deliver. Lord, you're mighty, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. We declare, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Oh Lord, how excellent is your name. Your 
has your glory above the heavens and the earth. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. So I got to go black, church, for just a second here. Hold your weave. Can you give me just a little bit more gold juice on that one? God been good to anybody in here tonight? Somebody say, yeah.
house tonight. Is that all right? All right, all right. Just a little bit, just a little bit. I had to warm up a little bit. Thank you, God. Thank you. testimony tonight. Has he been good to you? To me. Hey. Let's go a little bit higher. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try to say mm -hmm. to me, to me, to me, let's go up one more time. Lord, you are good. Come on, you know it now. You've been so good, Lord, you are good. Lord, you. Been. You've been so good, so good. Come on, say it again. You've been, you've been so good. Better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. 
and just thank him for a moment. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. He's been faithful. Amen. He has been what he has promised he would be to us. Amen. Will you just turn? I know you can't touch your neighbor or anything tonight. But would you just let them know God's been good to me? Just let them know God. Just, just give them a quick tell. God's been good to me. God's been good. God's been good. Amen. And that is my testimony tonight that God has been good to me. Amen. Uh, as you all know, there's a virus going around called COVID-19. Anybody heard about that? Amen. And I don't know if you... Uh, like me, in the beginning, I was very skeptical as to whether there was or whether there wasn't a virus. Hello. And uh, I found out. I got bit by the bug. It's all right to show your teeth tonight. Amen. It, I'm here. <laughs> Amen. It wasn't something that, that, that I expected and... Uh, wasn't something that I had studied. I had several friends who like really studied the virus and knew all the symptoms and knew all the signs and all those things. But when it was announced, I just didn't feel led to go that way. How many of you are glad for the person of the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you tonight? Amen. That heat is on now, isn't it? I'm... Or is that my nerves? <laughs> but um, in, uh, in August, I, I contracted the virus and uh, don't know how I got it, don't know who I was around when I, when I picked it up or anything, but I, I found myself in the emergency room and uh, I, I couldn't breathe, I didn't have symptoms like other folks had, you know, no headache, no cold, just couldn't breathe. And I found myself in the, in the emergency room and uh, just trying to get my breath, and they tested me, and they said, you have COVID, and uh, they put oxygen on me e immediately, and uh, gave me a hospital room, amen, <laughs> praise the Lord, and uh, just in the process of all that was, that was going on, how many of you are glad that the, the scripture lets us know that God's sheep hears his voice, amen, and the voice of a stranger we don't listen to. And one of the things that I have found out on, on this journey, especially with this journey of dealing with, with the COVID, that, that all along the way, God had been talking to me about my life and just about the plan, some of the things that he had planned for my life. And, and I really didn't, didn't catch it. I really didn't hear what he was saying until the crisis showed up. And it was in that time of crisis that he began to talk to me and he began to, to tell me all the things that he had told me ahead of time. Huh? He told me things ahead of time. So when the, when the battle showed up, I knew how to respond to the test. I knew how to respond to the battle. I didn't, I didn't fall apart because he already told me that he had a plan for my life. Listen, I was packed up and I was ready to go. Hello, somebody. Huh? 57 and good looking, but I was ready to go. <laughs> Amen. But, but because of me knowing God's voice, and he began to speak to me when I was in my, my hotel room before I ever got to, the, got to the emergency room, my breath got so short that, that I, was, I was just about to leave my body. And I, I was dying right there in the room, and it was just like, this is okay. I'm going to a better place. I wasn't nervous, I wasn't upset. It's just like, well, this is the exit out, but this is not so bad. <laughs> I didn't think it would be this easy. Anyhow, praise the Lord. So anyway, uh, as I was about to draw my last breath, the Spirit of God spoke to me. And just within in, in a few moments, he began to tell me things that he had told me ahead of time. And so I had a choice to make in those moments. Are you listening to me this evening? I had a choice whether I would stay or whether I would go. 
But I knew that the plan of God was not finished because, again, he had said some things to me and revealed some things to me through people that he had praying for me. And people had sent me messages on Facebook and just different things that, that started back last year. So when I got to August of this year, in that moment of time, God began to reveal and unfold those things that he had spoken to me. And so I was able to choose life rather than death in that moment. And how many of you know so, sometimes the, those, those times are just quick? You don't have a long time to make a decision. You don't have 24 hours, hello, to pray and seek and find out what the will of God is. You, you've got to know in that moment, this is the will of God. This is the plan of God for my life. And I choose the plan. And I want you to say that tonight. I choose the plan of God for my life. I want you to say it again. I choose the plan of God for my life. I want you to say it one more time. I choose the plan of God for my life. Amen. And God wants to prosper your life. God wants to flood your life with his goodness all the days, all the days of your life. Woo! Right in the face of adversity, right in the face of the worst test, of the worst trial that you can go through, God wants to flood your life with his goodness. Woo! And the psalmist said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. (laughs) And I like it where he gets down to the part where he says he prepares a table. Before me, in the presence of my enemies. Ha! Do you have any enemies? Amen. But Jesus has a table spread for you to feast from. Amen. And we had to get our attention on the table and not what the enemy is talking about. Amen. My attention is on the table. Let me go back to my shout track right quick. (laughs) I want you to say this tonight. My attention is on the table God has prepared for me. Amen. What's on the table? Everything that you need, everything that you desire, all the answers that you need. Amen. The way to get out, the way to turn your captivity, the way to joy, the way to peace. Amen. All that is on the table, and all you have to do is partake of the table, when you're faced with tests and when you're faced with trials, amen, choose the table. (laughs) In the presence of our enemy, he prepares a table before us. And how, how is that table, how do we recognize that table? We recognize that table by the word of God. Amen. We feast from the word of God. And so I had had the opportunity to to feast in a way that I'd never feasted before. And so when I when they got me in my my in the hospital room, you know, they ran all these tests and everything. And and you know, you find out a whole lot about yourself. A whole lot of people find out a whole lot. But, but anyhow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But anyhow, you know, they, they ran all these tests, and, and, and uh, the doctor came in and said, you know, you're a very healthy person. All that's wrong with you is this COVID. He said, you are, she said, you're a big guy. <laughs> <sighs> you're a big guy, but there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with you except for the COVID. And she said, the COVID is taking over your lungs. And, and basically, she said, I'm gonna explain it how you can understand it. He said, what the COVID is doing is making the sponge tissue like gel. And so instead of your lungs being able to breathe and move, it's just like gel, and that COVID is taking over and your, your lungs are becoming like gel. And uh, she said, if we don't get your lungs to working soon, we're gonna to have to put you on a respirator. Now, normally when you hear something like that, fear would strike. But he had already prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Amen. So I I, I heard the report, but I'd already been eating from the table. 
I already been eating from the table and I already knew that I was going to live and not die and not be on the respirator. Amen. And she was looking at me. And so, you know, I wasn't giving her probably the response that she wanted. And so she said it again. If we don't get your lungs to working, we're going to put you on the respirator. And I said, I'm not going on a respirator. My lungs will work. And she just kind of looked at me and she said, well, <laughs> we got the oxygen turned up as high as it'll go. <laughs> and if your lungs don't start working, we're going to have to put you on a respirator. And I said, my lungs, listen to me. Come on. You all know this. Jesus said, whosoever shall do what? Say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Huh? You got to talk to stuff. You got to talk. Amen. You got to talk to it. Amen. And so I started talking to my lungs. And immediately my mama came in my mind. Huh? Come on. You all can tell I grew up in a black household. And so when my mama spoke, she meant what she said, and she said what she meant. Amen. She might, she might say it twice because she thought you didn't hear her the first time. But that second time, there was not going to be a third time because she was coming for you. Yeah. And so that, that, that came to my mind. It's just like, amen, just like my body obeyed my mother, my body obeyed obeys my voice immediately, immediately. Amen. And so I was there, there Tuesday and there was no change. And I was there Wednesday and there was no change. And the doctor came in and said, we're going to have to do something. And I said, I'm going to be all right. And so Wednesday came. And when she came in Wednesday, they turned the oxygen down. Oh, I got my shout track. I don't, I, <laughs> when they came in Wednesday, they were able to turn the oxygen down. Amen. And they just went down, down because my, my lungs started working and functioning as they should. Why? Because right in the presence of my enemy, God prepared a table for me. Amen. And I chose to eat from the table. Now, in case you don't know, let me tell you, there was a whole lot of people dying in the black community from COVID. And so, you know, people make sure you get word. The black people are dying. I'm a black people, so I... <laughs> it's killing black people more so than it is any other. Come on. Any other race. Hello. And then you get news of, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You need to come home. You need to take this medicine. You need to do this. You need to do that. And all these things are coming at you. It's like I'm about to die and y'all hollering at me. <laughs> Lord have mercy. People make you cuss on the deathbed. But anyhow, I've been, I... <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm almost done tonight. But right in the midst of all that that was going on, God spoke to me. And he began to reveal some things to me that he desires that I do in life. And so I had to keep choosing. And one of the main things that enabled me to choose is that I had to shut everybody off. Everybody off. I had to turn off all the other voices. The nurses kept coming in and wanting to turn on the TV. And I'd just say, please, don't turn that on. Just, I just need to hear my father's voice. I just need to hear what he's saying in here because whatever he says, I'll do it. So anyway... It's a long story, 
but I won't go into it tonight. So if you want the rest of the story, go to Philip Slaughter Ministries Facebook page and check it out. It's an hour or more on the story. But God bought me out of that hospital and uh, healed me and gave me a wonderful testimony of his delivering power. Amen. And there are things that he wants to do for us. There are things that he desires to reveal and to unfold in our life, but we have to get ourselves in a position to where we can hear what he is saying. There are many voices in the world. There are many voices. There are many things that are trying to get our attention, but we have to shut those things off and lock in with God and hear what he's saying and let him be mighty in the earth through us. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. God's in you. God is in you. I'll tell this quick story and I'll be, I'll be done. I'm going to sing, I think, one more. We're having the time to sing one more. But amen. But I was traveling with, with Kenneth Hagen and I was exhorting on the stage one night and uh, we're exhorting from the, the song that says, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And, you know, it was just one of those nights where the organ was behind me and it was getting good. My help. I'm looking to the hills from which cometh my help. I'm looking. Anybody looking to the hills? <laughs> and we were just having a good time, you know. And I, I looked over at Brother Hagen and I noticed that he, he wasn't in tune. And so he gets up and he takes the, the, the platform and, and he says, I don't know about you, but I'm not looking to the hills for my help. <laughs> I'm like, that's the scripture, that's the Bible. I went to your Bible school. <laughs> and he began to, to, to run the scriptures about we no longer look out but we look in because greater is he that is in us. He's not at a distance anymore. Amen. He's not behind a curtain anymore. He's not behind the veil anymore. He's living and he's dwelling and he's abiding on the inside of us. And instead of looking out, now we look in. I need a better amen than that. I, we looking in. Amen. He's in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Amen. He's not out in the, in the mountains somewhere roaming and you got to go look for him. He's in you. He's in you. Amen. To lead and to guide and to direct. Amen. And to instruct you. He's in you to help you. Amen. Succeed in everything that you set your hands to in life. Hmm. He always causes you to triumph. I don't care what the sickness is. I don't care what the disease is. I don't care what the report is. God always causes us to triumph because he's in us to put us over in life. Praise the Lord. That's my exhortation tonight. One of the things that I've had to deal with in, in, in coming out of this is that I've, I've been having to deal with weakness in my body. I, I feel strong, you know, but then after walking a half hour, then I, I, I was sleeping for like four hours. And so I needed my body to be strengthened. And so the Holy Ghost began to help me how to strengthen my body and not wear myself out. And I had a friend to put together a booklet for me just on scriptures about strength. Amen. And I just want to encourage you tonight that God is your strength tonight. 
as you're sitting here in this room, as you're, you're sitting, amen, at home. There may be those of you who are in the hospital room tonight. And maybe you have a bad report and you're watching tonight. God is your strength to bring you out tonight. What he's done for me, he'll do for you. Amen. He'll strengthen you, heal you, deliver you. Amen. And give you a testimony. Glory to God. God is our strength tonight. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are an overcomer tonight. You are an overcomer tonight. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach heaven. To me, you are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me, say, you are my Strain like no other, like no other. Reach us to me. Reach us to me. Come on, sing it with me tonight. You are my strength. Whatever it is you need to overcome tonight. Strength like no other. He wants to strengthen you tonight. Strength like no other. Reach yes to me in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you in me up. Say you live me up. See yourself rising out of it tonight. You lift me up. Ooh, you are my strength. Strength like, strength like no other. Strength like no other. Like no other. Reach us to me. Reach Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. Come on, he's made you an overcomer tonight.
doesn't matter what the enemy may have tried. Doesn't matter how the enemy may have tried to bind you. Doesn't matter how sin may have tried to attach itself to you. The strength of God on the inside of you causes you to rise, causes you to be triumphant over sickness, over disease, over poverty, over lack, over every enemy that attacks your life. God gives you strength tonight to overcome. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer tonight. Father, we receive that strength tonight. We receive strength for discouragement. We receive strength for oppression and depression tonight. We thank you that you are our strength, that we lack in no area of our life tonight because you are our strength. You are our all in all. We bless you, Lord. Amen. Let me give you just a little bit more track. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love. Jesus is the best thing I've ever, ever done. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, I'm never disconnected, no. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. Falling in love, yeah, yeah. Falling in love, yeah. With the same. I remember the day he washed my sins away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is the best thing I've ever, ever done. Oh, in his arms, I feel protected. Oh, in my Savior's arms. I'm never, never disconnected. No, 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 no. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather be. Come on and worship the Lord tonight.
in his arms I'm never disconnected oh, In his arms I feel protected Satan, my Savior's loving arms, there's no place. He's my shelter in the time of storm, there's no place. Thank you for watching today's message. If you'd like to know more about today's message or the ministry here at Living Word Fellowship in Knoxville, Iowa, please call 641-828-7119 or visit us online at lwfknoxville.com. If you are in the Knoxville, Iowa area, please stop by and see us on Sundays at 10 a.m. or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. at 321 East Robinson, where there's always something for everyone.